when you won that appeal, man, oh, yeah. how did that make you feel and what was going through your mind at that time? And did you even think you was going to win the appeal? Yeah, I, 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 uh, I was very confident I was going to win. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to come off cocky, but I just knew that they was overzealous and that's a long man it's in the book man get the book <laughs> get the get the book man for people that want to get some real game yeah. uh for a fee and not for free man because it's worth it i mean i'm too smart to put a thousand dollar price tag on something that's not worth it come on because man. i would be setting myself up for failure in my whole life i've been successful come on so man come on support a real nigga i ain't begging just start buying you know what i'm saying come on. <laughs> now that's real but uh when i won my appeal man i did i did the um uh, the, the unthinkable because a lot of these guys um, they don't even have drugs real drugs in their case they have invisible drugs so they had over 100 kilos of cocaine on the table mm -hmm. they had millions not a million millions of dollars that they brought pictures in that they seized from me in my uh uh, uh, storage bin and they had 75 witnesses that came to testify now they was all against me because the way the feds work they just they indict everybody or threaten everybody and everybody come to court and they tell they they do their song and dance so they had all these people man and, and, I, and I went to trial and I lost but I had a very smart uh, team of lawyers that knew how to play the game and we came back and got one um, on appeal um and and it just and it's a lot of people that got them way by the short hairs way tougher than me, but they just they wasn't as blessed as I am. I'm blessed because I never play I never played dirty. Uh, I play I play the game to win. And I play I play I play fair. So I caught a break, man. And uh, like I said earlier, even God love a stand up nigga. So that's why he let me open the doors for me, man. I I got a ten years. I went from forty two years to being sentenced to ten years. And you get 10 years for being, for talking on the phone to a nigga like me on my level. Like, oh my just God. to talk to me, they're going to say, well, you part of the conspiracy, and conspiracy carry 10 years, and you, we're going to give it to you. We might give you 15 because we know you know something you ain't telling us. And um, I was able to come home after eight years of, uh, of that bit, man. And, it was, you know, it's been a blessing. I got another question then, though, Keith, because uh, when you think about Al Capone, Lucky Luciano, Bugsy Siegel, John Gotti, movies like The Godfather, when the skin tone ain't the same as ours, everybody seems like it's okay to tell those stories. But when it comes to our stories, a lot of people want to raise it. Why are you celebrating this? Why are you talking about this? When you was just watching The Godfather last night. Right. When you was just watching Scarface last night. When you've been watching all of these old white mm -hmm. gangsters your whole damn life. A black gangster stands up or a black hustler stands up and you have a problem with his story being told. What are your thoughts about that? So I had a little bit of that uh, when I did the Vlad thing. Some people in the comments, oh, you celebrating this dude. But they didn't even get my full story. See, my story is not a story to promulgate selling drugs if you sell drugs you're going to get killed or you're going to go to jail that's just the two faces that's attached to that my story is i got to tell you my backstory to show you where i'm at now yeah so a lot of times people just talk because they have a pair of lips or they just type <laughs> they just typing because this is the only time somebody would pay attention to them yeah. they have no no other way of uh, expressing themselves and sometimes they have some valid points i've had some very valid negative connotations towards me that had validity to it uh, from the standpoint, okay, I never looked at it from that perspective. Uh, but in totality, I know who I am and what I stand for. Like a lot of these, man, a lot of these people ain't right, man. A lot of these people deserve some of the scrutiny that they get, and I deserve some of that I get. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't live by compliments, so therefore I don't die by their insults. Right, you know, because I'm true to me, man. And I don't, nobody, nobody makes me but me and my God, man. And I stand on that. I ain't waiting for nobody to put me on. I put myself on. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I don't need, and and that's like I could sell I could sell a version of this book or twenty five dollars, hundred dollars. That ain't me. I'm not trying to be pop. <laughs> I'm already semi famous in forty six states and four Commonwealth. Come on. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm just proving a point that the hustle transferable. I can't be stopped. I can't be denied. And you can learn from me. You yeah. can actually learn from me, man. 
And it's just like, what's the little rap? Trinidad James, don't believe me, just watch. Just watch <laughs> game unfold like a roadmap right in front of your face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To prove that this hustle is transferable, man. Prove that uh, all drug, former drug dealers, all hustlers are not bad guys. All police officers and priests are not good guys. You see what I'm saying? So get to know the uh, the person, uh, not the the imagery that's attached to the name. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you have a... Like, <laughs> I want to use that. Well, I, I'm on I'm my I'm I'm bag. I'm going to take a couple of steps back. Mm -hmm. You can say, you can, I can say I'm so-and-so, I'm this and that. It, don't, it doesn't make it true because I say it. But I've learned to bring receipts to anything that I'm trying to promulgate. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times when in this world that we live in, the real is looked upon as fake. Cause I know I'm the truth, but people be questioning me because they never because I didn't promulgate myself like Big Meech, BMF movement. So the real is looked at as fake, but the fake is looked upon as real because you have a person that's on internet and they stunting, but they ain't got eye water to cry with. You see, so they believe it because they believe the story that's being promulgated promulgated to them. And I learned not to get caught up in that. I want those that's authentically drawn to me to rock with me. And I want the ones that's, that, that don't necessarily want to support me, I want them to be motivated by me because I know I'm doing something positive. I'm not doing something negative and saying, hey, do this, do this, do this, do this, and go get your ass, knock, get your noodle knocked back or go get you a, a boatload of time. And uh, like I said, I do motivational speaking for Chicago Public School. Shout out to Marshall High School. They gave me my first gig. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, I tell these guys, the first question I ask them, I said, who in here would do 30 years for their friend? <laughs> nobody raised their hand. And I said, ain't nobody going to do 30 years for you. Come on. So I'm trying to, I got to give them a shock. Like that, the, the, I got to give them a shock wave because if, when I came up, the, the, if you murder somebody, you might have got 20 years. In Illinois, you do half your time, so you'd be home in 10. So now, for murder, they're giving you, they starting you out with 40 and 50 years. 100%. Damn. So I have to I have to make it, I, I got to hit him, I got to hit him in the gut just like that. Because while you're out there doing it, you might have got away with a couple of bodies. And then when you get caught, then you're looking at all this time when you know you're on, you're on, uh, you're on dummy time. So I, I try to save these kids from themselves by being an example that they can uh, actually uh, touch. They can actually ask me questions. I'm not. I'm not on the internet. I'm real. You yeah. know what I'm saying. I, that's that's the thing. I'm I'm real, man. And I, and I have to, I've touched. I've, I, I've, the last time I did the uh, speech, man. Like when I come in, I said because I don't I don't have I don't have that big Meech persona. You know what I'm saying? Or I, I I'm a laid back dude. So I'm saying I'm I'm this and that. I'm they looking at me like yeah right. You know he he he, he yuck yuck giggle giggle. You know what I'm saying? But once I, I told them they can ask me any question and I and I approve everything that I say. I went from being like questioned to literally they want to carry me out on their shoulders. Uh, you know just they they appreciated the, my uh, authenticity. They appreciated my my pedigree. They appreciated it. I told them that they can make it. And I, I told him I told him the truth, you know what I'm saying. I, I gave and then I I was able to call some of my celebrity friends and all that kind of stuff, uh, because to them celebrities are un, unreachable. The only way they can reach them is being seeing them on the video or on, on one of you guys' podcasts. But I could pick them up and call them. You know, I have several of them and a couple of them answered the phone and it was that was a good experience for them. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the norm for me. I mean, because I know celebrities are regular people. Come on. They, 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 but they don't know that because they, the imagery that's been attached to them, and you know, they see them with the cars and all that kind of stuff, and they're influenced by that.